Okay, welcome everybody. So I'm Yuan Kai Chen from Taiwan. It's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Mark Levin as the speaker of our special uh, Emetic Lectures. And Professor, Professor Levin is a uh, world famous mathematician, best known for his work on the theory of motive and also on the algebraic cobolism. So today we are very happy that he's going to talk about motivic cohomages, past, present, and futures. So please, Professor Mark, Levin, thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. I'd like to thank the IMU for inviting me to give this survey talk on motivic cohomology, and also uh, uh, Peter Schulze and Christian Blomann for, and the Max Planck Institute for organizing this satellite conference, which allows me to give the talk in front of a live audience. Um, I'll have begin my talk with a discussion of the origins of motivic cohomology and some of the complexes uh, that made its first uh, uh, constructions. Then I'll move to uh, categorical frameworks, various uh, types of categories uh, for motivic cohomology. And then I'll discuss two new directions which have been recently introduced. Uh, so the origins of motivic cohomology go back to the Balance and Lichtenbaum conjectures. And these came out of uh, a number of different threads and sources. Uh, there was Quillen's algebraic K-theory. Uh, there are the conjectures about the orders of vanishing and leading terms for zeta functions and L functions, very deep conjectures. There was the development of block august twisted duality theory. And there's the Quill and Lichtenbaum uh, conjectures, which- is, uh, Excuse me, uh, Professor Levin, do you yes. like to share your screen? What's that? Do you like to share your screen? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's good. Thank now you. it's working? Good, we're yes. all sharing now. So uh, yeah, you see before me what I was talking about. And uh, we have the Quill and Lichtenbaum conjectures which give an isomorphism between algebraic K theory and uh, etal K theory, which is somehow easier to compute. It's closely, the second is closely related to topological K theory. So first uh, a bit about K theory and zeta values. Uh, Quillen showed that the K groups of a number ring uh, are all finitely generated abelian groups. And Borel uh, computed the ranks of these groups. He showed that uh, the even K groups, except for K naught, were all torsion. And the odd K groups have rank given by the order of vanishing of the zeta function of the number field. Uh, building on this, Lichtenbaum conjectured that the leading term of the zeta function at the negative integer minus N should be given as a ratio built out of the orders of uh, torsion orders of the K groups and in a uh, transcendental term uh, given as a regulator. Now this is uh, correct for n equals zero, but uh, this is nothing new. This is a classical uh, class number formula together with the functional equation for the zeta function. And it already fails uh, for n equals one and for the field being the rational numbers. Uh, the predicted value for K3 of the integers, its order was uh, 24 from this formula, but it turned out to be a Z mod 48. And as we'll see, uh, this discrepancy can be explained by the existence of the Milner K theory, uh, Z mod two inside of K3. So now on to uh, block Ogus cohomology theories. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about what these are, but uh, roughly speaking, this is a bigraded cohomology theories. So you have a cohomological degree P and then a second variable, in this case Q, uh, which you think of as a Tate twist. And there are various other properties, which I won't go into. Um, now, some zeta values uh, are closely relate, related to etal cohomology. And etal cohomology is a block Ogus theory. So here, the ZP of XQ would be the pth group of uh, X, the pth etal cohomology group with coefficients in the qth tensor power of the sheaf of nth roots of unity. Now, if you're not so familiar with etal cohomology, you can think of this as a version of the mod M singular cohomology uh, twisted or uh, enhanced by the uh, Galois cohomology of this, is this uh, twisted roots of unity. 
In any case, K theory is not a block Ogus theory. So let's see how that fits in this example of K3. Um, K3 of Z is detected in a tau cohomology groups, but in two different places. Uh, there's a twist by three. So here I'm using the um, L addict. So for L equals two and three, this is just the uh, limit of the um, mod M theories for M powers of two and powers of three. Uh, the K the uh, Z mod two, which is the Milner K part is uh, detected by the weight three H3 and the Z mod 24 quotient is detected by the H1. Now notice that the twists if I can get this to work. The, uh, the twists here are three, but the zeta value is at minus one, which is uh, use the functional equation that's one minus two. So the two is the right weight. And that gives you exactly the 24. So one can ask if there's a block Ogus theory that approximates K theory and uh, fits better to the zeta values. Now, Balenson uh, gave an idea of what this block Ogus theory should be. Um, he's, he noticed that if you take rational K theory, uh, you can break it up with respect to eigenvalues for the Adams operations. And that gives you a second uh, Tate grading or Tate twist. And this forms the universal block Ogus theory with Q coefficients. So it suggests that perhaps the universal integral block Ogus theory is the theory we're looking for. Um, so based on this and many other things, uh, Balenson and Lichtenbaum conjectured that this universal block Ogus theory should be represented by some uh, pre-sheaf of complexes on smooth varieties over the given base field, say over Q, um, as the hypercohomology of these complexes. And the axioms that they gave tell you uh, what, these, what form these complexes should have. Uh, so I'll get into the more precise axioms a little later, but for now, uh, just roughly speaking, they should have a close relation with algebraic K theory, with Milner K theory, uh, with a tau cohomology, and in positive characteristics with the uh, log differential. So this latter was added by Milne. Now, Balenson came up with another version of these conjectures, uh, which more sort of categorified them. Uh, he said there should be a category of mixed motivic sheaves on each smooth variety X, such that the uh, assignment uh, taking X to its de the derived category should admit a Grotendieck six functor formalism. Now, what this means is that all these different categories should fit together in a nice way, which enables you to define uh, cohomology, homology, uh, cohomology with compact supports and uh, Borel-Moore homology and the various dualities that uh, fit them together. And moreover, one should have uh, special objects, Tate sheaves in these categories. And under this uh, correspondence, the Bayless and Lichtenbaum complexes should be given as the derived push forwards of these Tate sheaves. And if you uh, work out what this means, it says that this universal block Ogus theory should just be given by the X groups of the Tate sheaves in this category. So that's why we call these uh, groups motivic cohomology because they're X groups in a category of mixed motivic sheaves, at least conjecturally. And now I wanna tell you about the uh, um, first constructions of uh, these complexes by Bloch and a homological version by Susan. So this is based on an algebraic version of the usual topological uh, simplices. So the topological n simplex is defined as a hyperplane in Rn plus one together with some inequalities. And they fit together to form a co-simplicial space using their uh, face and degeneracy maps. And this is what enables you to define homology and uh, cohomology of topological spaces. Uh, if you just forget about the inequalities, you have a purely algebraic object and uh, that's this delta n, it's just the hyper affine hyperplane inside of affine n plus one space. The uh, face and degeneracy maps for the topological simplices are linear in these coordinates. And so you can apply them to the algebraic setting and you get a co-simplicial scheme. More generally for an arbitrary scheme X, you can take the product and use the co-simplicial data on the delta star to define a co-simplicial scheme. Bloch used this to define his cycle complex. So uh, 
he takes, uh, so Q here is like the Tate twist. And in uh, homological degree N, these should be given as a subgroup of the co-dimension Q cycles on delta N cross X. In other words, it should be generated by co-dimension Q subvarieties with uh, an additional condition. And this additional condition is one of having good intersections with all the uh, faces of the delta Ns. What this means is for each of our uh, co-simplicial structure maps, the pullback by that map is well-defined. And then you can take the uh, pullback by the co-dimension one faces, take the alternating sum in the usual way as you just do in homology, and it uh, forms a complex, which is block cycle complex. And this gives us a block, the definition of blocks higher child groups. It's just the homology of this complex. If you look at the functoriality satisfied by this theory, it turns out it's an algebraic version of borel moore homology. It has uh, push forwards for proper maps and uh, pullbacks for, let's say, LCI maps. Um, now, if you view it as uh, in terms of the Balance and Lichtenbaum complexes, uh, these are cohomological objects. Uh, you can form them by simply sheafifying this construction over each individual variety X and then re-indexing to form a cohomological complex. Now, under this uh, change of variables, if you like, the motivic cohomology should be the Zariski hypercohomology of these complexes. Uh, but there's a, a fundamental localization property of block cycle complex proved by block that says that you get back exactly the higher child groups. You don't have to do anything uh, beyond that. You just take the global sections and the homology. Some examples, uh, if you take the homological degree zero part of this construction, you just recover the classical child groups of co-dimension Q cycles mod rational equivalents. Uh, in another direction, if you look at this on a uh, spec of a field, then in homological degree uh, less than the co-dimension, this is zero. And in the first non-vanishing uh, degree, uh, you get back the Milner K theory of the field. Uh, so this is a really remarkable result uh, proved by Totaro and Nesterenko Suslin. Uh, the Milner K theory you recall is the tensor algebra on the units in the field modulo the Steinberg relation. Oops. Oh, it went too ahead. Now, uh, Suslin homology is uh, an attempt to construct uh, homology rather than Borel-Moore homology. What he does is he, again, looks at the topological simplices and uh, the construction of homology via singular simplices and replaces these with, uh, not with just maps of delta n to variety x, but with uh, algebraic multi-valued maps. Uh, why? There are very few maps in general from an affine space to an arbitrary variety. So you would get a very uh, poor theory by using those. But what is an algebraic multi-valued map? Uh, it's represented by its graph, which is just a subvariety of delta n cross x, that projects in a finite and subjective manner to the first variable delta n. So you get a multi-valued map by taking a point in delta n and looking above it, that gives you the finitely many uh, values in x. Uh, you then take the free abelian group on such subvarieties, restriction to faces as before, uh, defines a differential making this into a complex. And the Suslin homology is just the homology of this complex. So now I want to discuss uh, putting these constructions into categorical frameworks. This is a construction of uh, Voyevodsky. Uh, he takes Suslin's idea of multi-valued maps and changes it into a uh, category. So essentially, the, you take smooth varieties uh, X and Y, the maps in this category core are just the multi-valued algebraic maps from X to Y, then group completed. In other words, uh, you take their graphs, which are just uh, subvariety Z in the product that project uh, finite and surjectively to X, to take the free abelian group of that. That's the homomorph, that's the maps or morphisms in this category. And composition is just as you'd imagine composing multi-valued maps. Uh, it turns out that this can be expressed in terms of uh, intersection theory. So it, it uh, preserves this algebraic condition. 
Uh, Voivodsky then uh, follows a fairly straightforward procedure looking back on it to define his uh, triangulated category of effective motors over K. What do you do? You take um, pre-sheaves on this category core K with values in uh, complexes of abelian groups, and then you localize that category. So you invert maps of pre-sheaves that are quasi-isomorphisms on Nisnevich stalks. So the Nisnevich topology is a topology between uh, the Zariski topology and the Atal topology, and the stalks come from uh, Hensel local rings. And then you also want to contract the affine line. So you uh, invert the map on the representable pre-sheaves, maps into X cross A1, mapping to maps into X. And that's it, very simple. Now there's some uh, obvious objects in this category. Uh, you take the representable pre-sheaf for a variety X and you look at its image in the localization, that's the effective motive of X. And if you do this for P1, uh, you can mod out by the uh, effective motive of infinity and then uh, put this in uh, homological, uh, cohomological degree uh, two. Um, and that's the Tate motive Z of one. Um, then Z of Q for a positive integer Q is just the Q tensor power of the Z of one. Uh, you invert tensor uh, power, tensor product with the Z of one. Uh, this enables a certain duality in the category and also allows you to talk about Tate motors with negative twists. And this forms Voyevodsky's category of triangulated motors over K, or at least this is a, a sort of more modern version of it. Now, once you have this uh, category, you can define motivic cohomology and homology purely categorically, simply by taking the map, uh, maps of the motive of X into the shifted Tate motives, or that's cohomology and homology, you map into the motive of X by uh, the zeroth Tate motive shifted by N. Uh, the remarkable theorem here by Voyevodsky, Suslin, and Friedlander is this recovers these very uh, sort of naive and concrete constructions of blocks, higher Chow groups, and Suslin homology. So moreover, uh, these objects, these Tate objects, uh, can be viewed as pre-sheaves of complexes on smooth varieties, uh, essentially from the construction. And they satisfy most of the Balance and Lichtenbaum axioms. Uh, if, so the first one is saying that the, that the motivic cohomology is the Zariski hypercohomology of the complex. And it's a theorem of uh, Voivodsky that this agrees with the Nisnevich hypercohomology. And essentially by the construction of the category, that's the categorical motivic cohomology. Uh, the cohomology sheaves of these complexes are zero. Uh, for Z of Q, they're zero in cohomological degree bigger than Q. And the top uh, non-vanishing one is the sheaf of Milner K groups. This is essentially the theorem of Nestorenko, Suslin, and Totaro. Um, there's a motivic Atiyah Herzebruch spectral sequence, which relates these motivic cohomology groups to K theory. And this spectral sequence degenerates over Q, recovering Balenson's, uh, you know, uh, motivic cohomology over Q. Uh, this was constructed by uh, Bloch and Lichtenbaum and then for fields and then extended by Friedlander and Suslin. Probably the deepest uh, axiom to satisfy is the description of the mod M theory. So this is for M prime to the characteristic. It gives you a truncated etal cohomology with this uh, twist of the mod, uh, the uh, mth roots of unity. So uh, the truncation means that if you apply this, for example, for a field, uh, the left-hand side uh, is by construction, um, by this axiom two, it vanishes uh, in degrees bigger than Q. This is not true for the etal cohomology. And so you force this vanishing condition in the etal cohomology and it recovers the motivic cohomology. Now notice this also says that the cohomology mod M vanishes in degrees less than zero. Just hold on to that thought. And then there's a result of uh, Geiser and myself, which fills in this Milne axiom of what happens mod P in characteristic P. So back to this vanishing uh, in degree zero and less, uh, this is the 
one Balance and Lichtenbaum axiom that's missing from the story, this is uh, Balance and Soule vanishing, that the cohomology sheaves of the qth Tate object should be zero in non-positive degree, at least if Q is positive. This is only known if Q is one, and it's a complete mystery if Q is bigger than or equal to two. There, there's really no idea as how to prove this. On the other hand, the remaining properties uh, by uh, spectral sequence arguments using this Atiyah Herzberg spectral sequence uh, yield the Quill and Lichtenbaum conjectures. Now notice there's a bound for these two things to be equal. Uh, and this comes from the truncation uh, comparing motivic cohomology with atal cohomology. They're not exactly the same and that's reflected in the K theory. Ah, so another category is uh, given by motivic homotopy theory. Of course, homotopy theory relies on a category of spaces, say simplicial sets, uh, the unstable homotopy category, which you get by inverting maps, which are weak equivalences, in other words, isomorphisms on the homotopy groups, and then the stable homotopy category of spectra, which you get by inverting suspension with respect to the uh, S1. Morell and Voivodsky define motivic versions of these. Uh, rather than spaces, you take presheaves of spaces on smooth varieties over K. Uh, the unstable category is again a localization of spaces where you again localize with respect to Nisnevich uh, local weak equivalences and then contract the affine line. And you form the category of P1 spectra, which is the motivic stable homotopy category by inverting suspension, not with respect to S1, but with respect to P1. Now, why do you uh, want to do that? Uh, in the classical case, you have a Spanier Whitehead duality, which requires the uh, inverting the suspension with respect to S1. And if you try and do this in the motivic sense, you see that you have to actually invert suspension with respect to P1, not S1. So this is like inverting the Tate motive in the, in the motive set. Here are some uh, features of this uh, construction. Uh, in this classical case, you have a one parameter family of invertible uh, suspension operators. So it's also, uh, right, for negative integers, that, that's what you get by inverting suspension with respect to S1. Uh, this gets replaced in the motivic setting with a two parameter family of suspension operators. You can uh, suspend with respect to S1 and also with respect to the so-called Tate circle uh, GM, which is the affine line minus zero pointed by one. These both become invertible in this category. Uh, you have a motive, if you like, a homotopy motive of a smooth variety X. This is the so-called uh, infinite P1 suspension spectrum. Uh, this category, just as in uh, the classical case, is a tensor triangulated category. And the unit is the motivic uh, sphere spectrum, which is the suspension spectrum of the base field, spec K. This also gives you uh, cohomology theories, uh, sort of uh, an infinite collection of them. Every P1 spectrum in SH of K defines a bigraded cohomology theory on smooth varieties just by taking the representable functor after shifting, after suspending by uh, any P and Q. That gives you the uh, PQ cohomology of X. And if you do a dual construction uh, and sheafify it over the smooth varieties, you get the uh, homotopy sheaves, pi PQ. Again, a bigraded family. Now, what does this have to do with motivic cohomology? Uh, Voyevodsky constructed a P1 spectrum, let's just call it HZ in this category, representing motivic cohomology. And he also constructed a spectrum representing Quillen K theory, algebraic K theory. So represented uh, means in this sense that uh, you have the, PQ values of the motivic cohomology is HPXZ of Q, and the PQ value of this motivic of this algebraic K theory spectrum is K theory in degree 2Q minus P. So you have a certain collapsing of the degrees for K theory. This is uh, algebraic bot periodicity. Now, he relates these two constructions through a kind of uh, motivic Posnikov tower. The classical uh, Postnikov tower in SH filters a spectrum by its connectivity. Uh, so you form a tower of covers of the spectrum where the, uh, the cover tau bigger than or equal to N of E is what you call the N minus one connected cover of E. 
Well, Ivovsky defined a P1 version of this and the analog tower is just written this way. The nth uh, cover Fn of E is the P1 n minus one connected cover of E. Now I'm not gonna tell you exactly what that means. It's, uh, it's a fairly formal construction. And the layers in this tower, the cofiber of these uh, subsequent map, maps, that's called the nth slice of E. So it's called the slice tower. So these slices for the uh, fundamental players in this game were computed by Voyevodsky over a field of characteristic zero. And uh, I generalized this to arbitrary characteristic. And there's recently a beautiful and elegant proof of the general case by Bachmann and Almanta works in all characteristics. The first result is that the zero slice of the sphere spectrum recovers Voyevodsky's motivic cohomology spectrum. And the second result tells you what the nth slice of the algebraic K-theory spectrum is. It's the nth suspension of the motivic cohomology spectrum. So this corresponds to the fact that the zeroth stable homotopy group of spheres is the integers, as is the two nth stable homotopy group of the topological K-theory spectrum KU. Now, once you have a tower, uh, you get a spectral sequence starting from the cohomology represented by the layers converging to the cohomology represented by what the tower is over. And you do this for KGL and its slice tower, and you recover the block Lichtenbaum, Lichtenbaum friedlander suslin spectral sequence and see that it corresponds exactly to the classical atiyah herzebrook spectral sequence for topological K-theory. There's another uh, really beautiful uh, structural result about this motivic cohomology spectrum. Uh, Rundig's Osfar uh, in characteristic zero and Kelly in characteristic P uh, say that this show that this spectrum refines to an E infinity object. So it has a nice uh, ring structure so that you can talk about its category of modules. And then the homotopy category of the HZ modules turns out to recover Voyevodsky's category of triangulated category of motives. You have to invert the characteristic when that's positive. There's another uh, beautiful result about uh, this construction. Uh, this is says that it's really the universal block Ogus theory. Uh, this is follows from a result of Hopkins Morell and uh, where the details and the extension to characteristic P was provided by uh, Hoiwa. And I just want to, I don't want to say anything about the proof but it's uh, really a homotopical proof. It relies on many uh, deep uh, constructions and results in the motivic stable homotopy category. So uh, now I wanna talk about how this thing looks like a category of motivic sheaves. Uh, for this, you need to say what this gadget is over an arbitrary base. Well, that's not so hard for the motivic unstable and stable homotopy categories. You just take the definition we gave over a field and replace the uh, parameters uh, category, the smooth varieties over a field with the smooth varieties over the base scheme B. Once you do that, um, then you can ask how these all fit together. And this is this uh, six functor formalism. So it looks like a sheaf theory. This was established by Ayub, Szynski, de Gliese, and Hoywa in various uh, settings. Uh, the construction of Voyevodsky's slice tower and his algebraic K-theory spectrum extend directly. However, for the algebraic K-theory spectrum, this no longer represents Quillen K-theory if the base is not regular. Uh, you have to make uh, K-theory a1 invariant because every cohomology theory represented in this setting uh, has this A1 invariance property. This was a construction by Weibel. So it represents uh, Weibel's A1 uh, invariant, homotopy invariant K-theory. Um, the construction of the motivic cohomology spectrum is a bit more difficult. Um, yeah, I'm kind of running out of time, so perhaps I won't say too much about this. Uh, you basically start with a naive extension of block cycle complexes to define a pre-sheaf of complexes over uh, the smooth varieties over a Dedekind domain. And this has no good ring structure to it. Uh, and Spitzbeck puts a ring structure by gluing what happens with the Q coefficients. This is a construction of Szynski de Gliese. Uh, representing the, this type of motivic cohomology as a sum and of algebraic K-theory, as Balenson did. 
And then uh, the mod P theory is provided by a distinguished triangle for, uh, worked out by Geiser. It relates this mod P to the N theory with a tau cohomology over Z1 over P and the um, log Durham Witt forms over FP. And both of these two theories have a good multiplicative structure. So Spitzbeck uses that to uh, fit things together by this fracture square. Uh, so maybe I won't say anything more about that. Um, and that's what you do over, uh, over Z. Then over an arbitrary base, you just pull back to that base to give this uh, spectrum. And you recover uh, blocks higher child groups from this construction, at least for something which is smooth over a Dedekind domain. Um, now, what about the mixed motivic sheaves? Uh, this gets recovered in a sort of infinity derived sense uh, by this construction. So um, you just define this category to be the category of HZ modules over the given base. And this inherits a uh, six functor formalism from that of the SH of K, SH. By the Sorondag's Osvar and Kelly theorem, this uh, recovers what you had before over a field of characteristic zero and over a field of characteristic P if uh, P is positive. Um, let's see, I think I should make this a little short that the uh, result on the slices and on the top a lot on the algebraic K theory extend uh, over an arbitrary base, giving you this uh, Tia Hertzebrook spectral sequence over an arbitra arbitrary base. So um, let me talk about two new directions. I think this slide was supposed to come after this one. Oops, I think, no, I know, I skipped. What's going on? Wait, wait, come back. There, two new directions. There's the direction of uh, a non-A1 uh, homotopy invariant theory, because there are many phenomena which are not A1 homotopy invariant, for example, K theory. And there's also an extension uh, involving quadratic forms. So first, the non-A1 invariant theory. Um, this is a construction of Almonto and Moro, and uh, it's actually closely related to uh, the topic that uh, Bhargav Bhatt spoke about yesterday. Um, you have the cyclotomic trace map from algebraic K theory to uh, another uh, homotopical construction, uh, topological cyclic homology. Um, and then you can take the uh, so-called CDH localization by uh, starting with the Nisnevich uh, topology and adding in covers, which are so-called uh, abstract blow-up squares. So this gives you a commutative square and the main results uh, on cyclotomic trace and excision for K theory uh, proven by a long line of uh, mathematicians and finally the, getting the most general case by work of Lan Tama show that this square is a homotopy Cartesian square. Moreover, the CDH localization of K-theory recovers Weibel's homotopy invariant K-theory. So this is uh, Hazemeyer's work in characteristic zero and in general due to Kertz, Strunk, and Tama. Now, uh, this construction of Almanto Moro, let me describe a little bit about how it works in characteristic uh, P. Um, first of all, the, as, as before, they extend uh, the block, these block Voyevodsky complexes on smooth varieties over K to arbitrary schemes over K by a formal construction, by a formal uh, operation of left con extension. And then they take the CDH localization. So that's the first uh, ingredient. Now uh, there's a uh, filtration by Bott, Moro, and Schulze on topological cyclic uh, homology. And this gives these uh, layers, the syntomic complexes related to prismatic uh, cohomology. Now, uh, Bachmann, Elmanto, and Moro uh, consider the uh, slice filtration on this CDH localization of uh, K theory. And this has layers. They show that the layers here are exactly the CDH localization of these con extended complexes, motivic complexes. And Almanto and Moro then show that the uh, block moro schulze filtration on topological cyclic homology agrees with the motivic filtration on CDH localized K-theory in their common uh, 
target of CDH localized topological cyclic homology. So then you do the obvious thing. Uh, you take these uh, filtrations, which glue together, you take the layers, they glue together again, and you pull back uh, forming a homotopy Cartesian square to define these objects Z of Q mode. And there's a similar construction in characteristic zero, which I won't tell you about. Uh, some basic properties of this, this uh, very, yeah, this construction recovers the old, uh, cat, old uh, uh, complexes on smooth varieties over K and the CDH uh, localized version uh, gives a model for Spitzbeck's motivic cohomology. Um, and then you have a, a suitable extension of the block Lichtenbaum axioms, or at least some of them hold for arbitrary quasi-compact quasi-separated schemes over K. Uh, maybe I'll just leave the details on that. Uh, there's another construction uh, by Kelly and Saito. They again take these uh, con extended complexes and they have a, a, another uh, topology, the pro CDH topology. Um, and they just take the pro CDH localization of these con extended complexes as their uh, candidate complexes. And this works for arbitrary uh, quasi-compact, quasi-separated schemes doesn't have to be over a field. Uh, it's not clear exactly what they get uh, with this construction, but there is work ongoing to see that these two definitions agree when one works over a field. Um, there are some categorical constructions that might uh, sort of explain this, uh, this, uh, these complexes, um, but this is sort of in uh, preliminary stage here, there's not really any good categorical framework for these of yet, although there are a number of candidate uh, non-A1 invariant homo uh, motivic homotopy categories available. So again, since I'm uh, running out of time, I think I should just leave that uh, topic for later. Uh, let me go on and talk a little bit about this extension, uh, which involves quadratic forms. Oops. Nope, here we go. Oops, I'm really, I'll get there. Yeah, okay. So this is based on a uh, construction of Hopkins and Morel of a uh, quadratic enrichment of Milner K theory. So Milner K theory is a graded algebra generated uh, in degree one over the integers by the units of the field. Uh, Hopkins and Morel's Milnervit K theory has gener it's a graded algebra. It has generators in degree one also for the units in the field, but there's an additional generator in degree minus one with these uh, four types of relations. Uh, the second relation is exactly the Steinberg relation. And then there are uh, three other ones. There they are. Now, uh, the higher Chow group, uh, not the higher Chow groups, the usual Chow groups of a smooth variety can be expressed in terms of the cohomology of the Milner sheaves. This is Bloch's formula proven by Quillen for X a smooth variety over a field. And this suggests uh, a quadratic enrichment. This is called the Chow Vick groups. This was introduced in a slightly different form by Barge and Morel and was developed by Fazel. So you just take the uh, block formula and fill in the Milner-Witt uh, K sheaves and you get a new theory, which, uh, ah, let's see. So I should have told you something here, wait. So why does this have to do with quadratic forms? Somehow I missed the slide. Um, so Morel shows that these uh, constructions for a field extend to a sheaf of graded rings on smooth varieties. So, the zeroth uh, graded piece is the grotendieck vit ring of quadratic forms. And the nth graded piece for negative n is the quotient, uh, the, vit, the vit groups, which is the quotient of the grotendieck vit groups by the uh, hyperbolic form. And for positive n, one has a exact sequence. There's a surjection from the Milner vit group to the Milner uh, sheaf with kernel given by the um, powers of the augmentation ideal. So the fundamental connection of this uh, theory with motivic homotopy theory is Morel's theorem, um, which tells us that the bi-graded uh, homotopy sheaves of the sphere spectrum in bi-degree NN are exactly given by these milner witt sheaves. So now here's uh, the formula for the chow witt groups, which now we see has something to do with quadratic forms. 
And we can give an explicit description of these things in terms of quadratic forms. Uh, uh, an algebraic cycle is a Z linear combination of subvarieties. So a codimension N cycle is a Z linear combination of codimension N subvarieties. And if you replace the coefficients, uh, instead of using integers, you use elements of the grotendieck witt ring of the residue field of the given variety. Uh, this gives you um, sort of quadratic chains. There's an additional boundary condition mapping to a similar type of sum for over subvarieties of codimension n plus one. And the kernel of that, you can think of as a quadratic cycle. Then there is a co-boundary, a boundary relation, uh, which is like a milner witt refinement of the notion of rational equivalence. And this defines this uh, chow and tilde, these chow witt groups. And these fit together in the same way as the chow groups do. There's a quadratic intersection theory, quadratic Euler classes for vector bundles, quadratic virtual fundamental classes. So there's been a lot of development of this uh, theory by many people. Um, and there's a nice, nice applications to enumerative geometry. Uh, rather than taking the degree of some uh, element in Chow zero, uh, Chow uh, dimension zero Chow groups, um, to give uh, counting for an enumerative problem, there is a quadratic degree for enumerative problems in this setting, where uh, instead of an integer, you end up with a quadratic form, an element in the grotendieck witt ring of the base field of the problem. If you take the rank, you get back the uh, classical degree, the, the classical count. And if your field is inside of uh, the reals, then the signature gives you a signed count of the real solution. So it fits these two problems together. Uh, so let me say a little bit about the motivic homotopy theory uh, involved here. This chow witt theory is represented in the motivic homotopy category by a spectrum, uh, a, a, a Milner, uh, motivic cohomology spectrum, HZ tilde. This was constructed by Bachmann. Um, it uses another filtration in this category, which is essentially the classical more Postnikov uh, tower. You can filter in SHFK also by usual topological connectivity. Uh, this is a result of Morel. And just as in SH, it actually, uh, it comes from a T structure. It's Morel's homotopy T structure. So you can then take the truncation to the heart for this T-structure applied to the sphere spectrum. And then you can take the uh, minus one uh, P1 connected cover of this thing for Voivodsky's slice tower. And this is Bachman's definition of the HZ tilde. Um, now this gadget represents these chow witt groups by the formula you see The 2NN component of HZ tilde of X is exactly the nth chow, uh, chow witt group. You can, of course, take the full bigraded theory, and this is called Milner Witt motivic cohomology. Uh, in sort of in a reverse uh, of history, uh, it's now been shown by uh, Bachmann, Kalmes, de Gliese, Fasel, and Osfar that this is actually uh, represented in a uh, category of Milner Witt motives. They construct this category of milner witt motives uh, similar to Voivodsky's category by starting with a complex uh, category of finite correspondences where they take a uh, quadratic refinement very similar to the description of quadratic cycles that I described before. So the coefficients would be elements in the Grotendieck bit ring of the, of the field of functions on the supports with a certain twist by uh, the dualizing sheaf, which enables you to get a well-defined composition law. And then you essentially follow uh, Voyevodsky's construction to yield a triangulated category, uh, DM tilde with uh, quadratically enhanced Tate objects and quadratically enhanced motives for a scheme X. And you recover the milner witt motivic cohomology as the maps in this category. Well, uh, I think that's, all I wanted to tell you. Is it? Let's see. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. It's just about on time. So, just about on time. So Let me just show you this picture of all the, uh, the next generation, all the young mathematicians who've been working on this for a while. And I hope I've uh, shown you some of the beautiful mathematics that people have uh, uncovered looking for the true motivic cohomology.
Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the beautiful talks. So uh, due to a time limit, we cannot take questions here, but you are encouraged to talk to Professor Davin in person or by writing an, event, writing an email. So thank you again and thank everybody.